Hey guys, I'm Dylan, and today I'm going to talk about my Stanford essays. If you haven't already, go check out the How I Got Into Stanford video where I talk about my stats, my scores, my activities, and I share some tips with you. Before we jump into my essays, I wanted to say that I researched a lot when I was doing my application. I watched a lot of webinars. I read two books. Um, the first one is College Essay Essentials, which is really, really great for writing your personal statement, your Common App essay. And I read 50 Successful Stanford Application Essays. That one was really helpful as well, and it had tips for each essay. But I'm going to share you my tips from what I learned. The timestamps are written below in the description, so if you want to skip ahead and look at specific essays, you can do that. I'm going to start off with my personal statement, which is the Common App Essay. The prompt that I chose was, describe a problem you've solved or a problem you'd like to solve. It can be an intellectual challenge, a research query, an ethical dilemma, anything that is of personal importance, no matter the scale. Explain its significance to you and what steps you took or could be taken to identify a solution. Here's my essay. The rattle of a doorknob shook me awake, and then BAM! A door slammed open. He's coming, aided by his walker. Clunk, shuffle, shuffle. My clock read 4.27 a.m. It was the third time tonight, a new record. The hall light switched on, and in Chinese, my grandfather's deep voice pierced the night against my mom's whispers. As usual, he was disoriented, thought it was time to eat, and being hard of hearing required loud convincing by my mom to return to bed. Later that morning, as my dad and I prepared breakfast, my grandfather hobbled into the kitchen. Good morning, Yeye, I said, still groggy from last night. Yeye's eyes scanned the room. Where am I? he asked. I explained once again. This is our apartment and your new home. Your wife, Maria, moved back to Taiwan last month, so now we are taking care of you. I watched the sweet smile vanish from his face as he struggled to remember what had become fragmented by Alzheimer's disease. Plaques and tangles had accumulated in his brain, and now they spread into our everyday lives. My family was completely unprepared to care for a 90-year-old disabled man. There were no funds for professional elder care, so my mom, dad, and I had to quickly adapt to accommodate his needs. After a number of falls, we installed guardrails, a shower chair, and other safety equipment into the bathroom, which he shared with me. My grandfather's dementia erased the connection that he and I once shared. When I was younger, we used to solve math puzzles together, but now we couldn't even hold a conversation. As I looked back, I realized Yaya had lived a sedentary senior life. Would a more active lifestyle have led to a different outcome? How do we live our final years with independence, health, and happiness? I've noticed that our American culture glorifies youth and nearly ignores what it means to grow old. While our secondary education system addresses the beginning of life, it fails to bring awareness to our final decades and how we will be supported during that time. Whenever there's research to be done, my parents assign it to me. By reading many articles on elder care, I discovered that the senior population will exponentially skyrocket in the coming years due to the aging baby boomer generation. It became clear that a comprehensive resource was needed to educate this massive influx of seniors and their families. I am developing a mobile app to prepare families for elder care and maintain patients' cognitive health. My app will enable users to complete advanced care planning documents, compare elder care options for both in-home and outside facilities, and access practical resources such as videos and diagrams to help families assist their loved ones. Additionally, it will promote cognitive health through exercise, nutrition, sleep, brain games, and a daily journal. The games will be personalized to exercise memory, like matching the names of family members with their appropriate pictures. Users will be reminded to write or speak into their journal with thoughts and feelings to strengthen their reasoning skills. I am currently in the process of researching and designing a prototype for my app, and I plan to continue building it in college. Yeye can no longer walk. While the challenges have increased, I have learned to appreciate the different stages of life and return the love and care that my grandfather once gave me. With this in practice, Yeye's disposition improved and he accepted our home as his. My help is now received with gracious smiles and exclamations of wow, 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 especially as I serve him meals. I am determined to sort through the tangles of life. 
So when I hear the doorknob rattle at night, I know it's just a reminder for us all to make healthier choices today for a better tomorrow. So that was my Common App essay, and now I'm gonna move on to the next essay, which is one of the three main Stanford essays. So the first essay's prompt is an idea or experience that makes you excited about learning. This is the essay where you want to take them on a journey into your mind and show how you think. This one was pretty challenging for me to decide what I wanted to talk about. Basically what they want is a person who is super, super passionate and super, super curious about a specific subject. And it can be anything. It doesn't have to be an academic subject. Um, it can be a sport, an activity, or an experience, something that happened to you that you thought a lot about and it made you realize something. It's also nice if you make it into a story instead of just describing, describing, describing something that you're super passionate about. Another tip for this essay is to focus on something that will make you stand out. Initially, I wanted to write about math because I have always loved math and I think it's really interesting the way that I think about math and in diagrams and numbers and stuff like that. However, I realized that Stanford is a STEM school and a lot of people are probably going to write about math or computer science or engineering, stuff like that. So I wanted to showcase something about myself that was still really true to myself and that I was very passionate about, but that also highlighted something different. So I chose to talk about design. So here's my essay. Ding! I had just received an email in response to the first draft of my 2018 yearbook cover design. We like the background, but the illustrated academy symbols are lacking originality. How could I create a clever retro-themed cover that integrated the visual, theater, music, and dance academies of my school? After a week of researching countless works, I discovered that styles from the 1900s to 1920s resonated the strongest for this project. Finally, I was ready to transcend my own limitations. Referencing the artistic movements of Distill, I restricted my color palette to shades of red, teal, and primrose yellow. I incorporated contemporary trends and Russian constructivism to transform the numbers 2018 into bold geometric shapes. These were then layered and intermixed with figures, instruments, and artistic tools, all influenced by the jazz art of the Harlem Renaissance. What was a zero had become the lens of a camera, and what was an eight had become a cello being strummed. In many ways, I saw my artwork as a geometry puzzle. Each shape was created in Photoshop with bezier curves, whose control points I manipulated to stretch along tangential lines. The background flowed with cubistic angles and converging colors that wrapped around the cover. After numerous revisions, both sides of my artistic equation eventually found balance. Research and experimentation allowed me to discover unique ways to combine design concepts, math principles, and my school culture. While the cover was a success, the true reward was in the process. So that was my intellectual experience essay. Um, I did find a way to still incorporate math with it because I wanted to show Stanford that I had that right brain creativity while also the left brain analytics and logical thinking processes. The next essay is a note to your future roommate. So my tips on this are to get creative and show off your personality. This is where you can throw in a little humor, but be honest. Try to focus on the positive qualities of yourself rather than the negative ones. Another tip and note that I was given for one of my drafts of this essay was to not be self-centered. It is an opportunity to talk about yourself a lot, but you should definitely take interest in your roommate. Even though you don't know who it's gonna be, just take interest in them and what they have to offer. So don't just make it a silly essay about your likes and dislikes. I mean, definitely throw in some, but make it meaningful still. You wanna show what you will bring to the Stanford community. And this is my essay. Dear roommate, when we first meet, I will greet you with a giant smile. Just so you know, this smile will never disappear. You see, I'm like a light bulb, always bright and full of energy. I look forward to sharing my positivity as we absorb ourselves in all that the Stanford community has to offer. Let's attend job fairs and club meetings together, and then grab breakfast for dinner with all the new friends we've made. 
Life can be exhilarating, but it's important to stay grounded. I do this through the arts. I'll spend my free time songwriting in bed with my ukulele, painting images to add to the gallery on my walls, releasing stress through movement on the dance floor, rushing to musical auditions, and singing at the top of my lungs until you ask me to stop. What do you like to do for fun? Perhaps we can combine our interests and collaborate on our own creative projects. As your roommate, I will ensure that our friendship consists of trust and support. If you're ever in a pickle, don't hesitate to share what's on your mind. We can offer our unique perspectives on life to guide each other through difficulties. I'll be your cheerleader, lifting your spirit during challenging times with my enthusiasm and words of encouragement. You and I are in for a wondrous adventure. Here's to new experiences, close friendships, and never-ending smiles. The third essay that Stanford requires you to write is Something Meaningful to You and Why. I recommend for this essay that you get reflective and as specific as possible. Stanford is looking for people with a high emotional quotient. This means they want people who have the ability to self-reflect. Here is the essay. The day's memories flash through my mind as I lie in bed. The piano plays. Their eyes watch. My voice cracks. My music teacher shakes his head in disappointment. I open my eyes. The street light beams through the blinds, casting long shadows across my bedroom. I pull back the covers and hit the lights. Only one solution can clear the thunderstorm raging in my mind. I open a bedside drawer to reveal the archive of my personal thoughts. Clasped with a letter lock, my journal contains the story of my life over years of entries. I flip it open and begin to write. A tsunami of words bursts from my fingertips as I empty every thought and concern from the day onto the pages. As I set my pen down, a wave of calm washes over me. Journaling increases my self-awareness. It allows me to organize my thoughts and identify issues that have gone unnoticed. Reviewing what I had written, I realized I had burst into laughter during the final notes of my song, prompting my teacher to react negatively. This was actually a reflection of my own insecurity. Instead of regarding the experience as a failure, I accept it as a challenge to work harder. The embarrassment I carried in my mind now lives on the pages of my journal. I slide the book back into its drawer and close my eyes, knowing that the clouds in my mind had cleared. So those were my three main essays for Stanford. Um, I forgot to mention that those three all have a 250 word limit and I made sure to almost hit the word limit each time. I just, it wasn't necessary, but I felt like I should fill up all the words that I can. <laughs> Stanford also has you write a bunch of little essays as well. Um, so the first one is about an activity. So the prompt is briefly elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities or work experiences. This has a 150 word limit. I had been selected for the Girls Who Code Summer Immersion Program to study computer science for seven weeks. I collaborated with highly motivated females like myself as we explored the coding languages of HTML, CSS, Arduino C, and Python. During the last two weeks, my team of three girls developed a mobile app with a tracking device to identify the location of one's valuables. I was in charge of designing the app's interface, embedding Google Maps, and encoding the tracker's GPS and Bluetooth data. Though I faced continuous errors in my code, online research and several different approaches allowed me to create the functioning features. The process of developing our app taught me the importance of patience, persistence, and taking risks. Girls Who Code strengthened my ability to transform ideas into reality and inspired my future career path. So I use this essay to show the more computer science-y side of me. I think it's really important to craft your application in a way that showcases what you want to come across as. So I wanted to show both the computer science and artistic side of myself in my application since that's what I put as my major. Now there are a bunch of short questions that are each 50 words that Stanford has you write also. So I'm just going to go through those. Oh, and my advice for these? is to be creative as possible and show off your personality. It's totally okay to throw in some humor and I also recommend being honest. I recommend being honest throughout your entire application, by the way. What is the most significant challenge that society faces today? Our society has become polarized between contrasting beliefs. 
even causing divisions among loved ones. The truth is twisted to rationalize each viewpoint and drive us further apart. We must shift our focus to the common goal of elevating humanity through justice, tranquility, and welfare. How did you spend your last two summers? Coding an app, late nights experimenting with graphic design, new friends, dancing, note-taking on the wise words of Broadway performers, finding confidence in my vocal abilities, finally, card games, driver's ed, dressing up grandma for fashion photo shoots, teaching kids the difference between mass and weight, and admiring your beautiful campus. What historical moment or event do you wish you could have witnessed? I am on the sixth voyage of Chinese explorer Zheng He in 1421. We sailed to India, Africa, and America? My presence would solve the controversy of whether Zheng, on his diplomatic mission, beat Columbus to the New World, and whether Columbus, with his commercial motives, should have been celebrated. What five words best describe you? Optimistic, resourceful, versatile, persistent, and reflective. When the choice is yours, what do you read, listen to, or watch? Musical theater songs are my jam. I sing along to the soundtrack of Waitress while applying the fundamental theorems of calculus to my homework. I'll even dive into a lesser known musical like Bubble Boy, visualizing the staging in my head and discovering new audition songs along the way. Name one thing you are looking forward to experiencing at Stanford. When I visited the Stanford Design School, my eyes flew past the many post-its on the walls and landed on one pink paper that read, do epic shit and get epic shit done. Four years from now, I want to think back to that paper having fulfilled its message. Imagine you had an extra hour in the day. How would you spend that time? Exercise is an activity that often appears last on my to-do list. With an extra hour, I would digress from my work to dedicate time toward yoga and dance classes. These would allow me to release toxins, strengthen my form, and maintain a healthy connection between my mind and body. So those were all the short questions and my answers to them. Um, I really hope this video helped. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns in the comments, and I'll see you later.